Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Evidence and in today's video, I am going to show you how to explain a re gradient boosting regressor model. So gradient boosting regressor model, right? In the previous video, I showed you how to create a gradient boosting regressor model. In this video, I'm going to focus on showing you how to explain one that you've already created. So if you haven't watched the last video, make sure you go ahead and watch it. And I also created videos on how to explain a linear regression model, how to explain a random forest model. So make sure you subscribe to the channel and check out those other videos. So you've created your gradient, gradient boosting model, but now how do you know which features contribute to the results of your model, right? That's what I'm going to show you in this video. So if I scroll back up here a little bit, you see that I created a gradient boosting model and I call this model GB model. So first we are going to get the future importances from the model. If you go to the documentation for gradient boosting, you see it has an attribute called future importances. And most times an attribute is like the things that are available to you after you run the model. So after you put your model through your data frame, you know, you'll be able to get access to stuff like the future importances for your model. That's what we are going to focus on for this one. And I'm just going to call it importance GB for gradient boosting is equal to GB model dot importances future importances and let's just do importance GB and kind of get a preview of what it looks like. So basically these are like the future importances that contributed to the model's output. Think of these future importances kind of like the coefficient in a linear regression, right? And if I go ahead and show you the columns for the training data, So this is the columns for the training data and each future importance describes each future in the data frame. So this future Im importance can be attributed um, to this future, so forth and so on. And this project that I'm using as an example is trying to predict the insurance premium of people. And um, yeah, so, so the target for this project is predicting the insurance premium and we run a gradient boosting model through it and this is the future importances that contributed to the gradient models predictions and this is the columns for our data frame so i am going to put the columns in a variable so i can have easy access to it I'll go ahead and close this. And for us to visualize our future importances, we need to create a pandas series between our columns and our future importances. So if you look at this right here, just looking at these numbers, it's very difficult to determine which features has the most impact and which features doesn't have that much of an impact. Just looking at this, so we are going to create a, a visualization to kind of help us visualize what our model is doing. So let's do that. So let's um, combine columns with future importances. And to do that, we just do, let's just call it GB graph is equal to PD dot series. PD stands for pandas, and I already imported pandas earlier. Import pandas as PD, and then I am going to create a series between our importance and our columns. 
all right and let's get a preview of what our graph looks like of what our series looks like as you can see right here each future has been paired with its corresponding importance number from our model so that's the whole purpose of this just creating a pandas series that has both of this information together so now the best part is visualizing and in order to do this we need to import matplotlib so i'm going to do import matplotlib as pyplot and then from matplotlib import figure so if you are working in jupyter lab or jupyter notebook make sure you have matplotlib installed in your environment like it doesn't matter what environment you're working in even if it's um, vs code make sure you have matplotlib installed in your environment if not you will not be able to use matplotlib if you don't have it in your environment i already have matplotlib in my google collab environment so first i'm gonna define um the size of the graph you can make this any size you want but i found this to be the size where like i'm able to look at all the futures without the futures overlapping or cramping each other so i'm going to establish um, the size for the graph and then i'm going to graph this pandas series here so i'm going to call it gb graph dot sort values and basically the way sort values is is ascending true which means from smallest to biggest you know so that's um the default you can change it to descending if you want but i want it to be in ascending order and i'm gonna do dot plot dot bar edge and then i want the color to be red so basically i'm gonna take um this panda series that I created between the future importance and the columns. And then I am going to sort it in ascending order. Then I'm going to plot it, but I want a horizontal bar graph. So bar graph H stands for horizontal. And I want the color of the graph to be red. And let's go ahead and add a title to it. And let's go ahead and run this. And boom, just like that, we have a graph. So now we have a graph and this graph is basically showing us all the futures, right? And then it is showing us the future importances. So it's basically taking this information right here and it's putting it in a graph format that's easier to understand. And basically what this is doing right here is showing us that these are like the futures that has the most impact on your insurance premium. And this is kind of consistent with what we got with other models. Okay. So if you watch all my, if you watch other videos, I have another video that shows you how to explain a random forest regressor model. And, and based on a random forest model, you can also see that um, the same set of features is kind of what contributes to your insurance premium. And if you go back up here to our linear regression model and you can see like the same sort of features is what um, contributes to your insurance premium and these features kind of like increase the amount of money you pay for insurance premium right so if we go back down here to our gradient boosting model we can kind of see the futures that has the most impact on your insurance premium and then we can see kind of like uh, these other features doesn't have much of an impact on your insurance premium so that's basically it for this video that's it in a nutshell on how to explain your gradient boosting model of course this is not the only techniques there's many other techniques for explaining models like sharply box plots which i'm going to make a video about that next so just subscribe to the channel so you can learn other ways to explain your model but this is just one way to quickly find out which features are important in your model. And you can visit me online at evidenceend.com. That's my primary website 
where I write data science blog post. And there are more blog posts coming very soon. So visit me online at evidencen.com. And since you are here anyway, you can go to free data science resources. And this is where I put all my free data science resources. And that's machinelearningeducation.com slash free. So if you want to get access to this notebook that I use in today's video and any other resources that I have, you can find it here at machinelearningeducation.com slash free. I create a lot of YouTube videos and a lot of blog posts and I just found it easier to take all my YouTube videos and blog posts and tutorial code notebooks and put them together into one platform and make it easier for you to find it. So instead of you like searching GitHub and searching my YouTube channel and searching my blog for the notebooks, you can just come to one place and find all my resources. And also sometimes I publish videos on this platform long before I make it available on YouTube. So be sure to go to machinelearningeducation.com slash free. Or you can just go to the main website, which, which is machinelearningeducation.com. And from here, you can go to free data science resources and still be able to get to the same page. And of course, I'm going to leave this link in the description below too. That's it for this video. If you made it this far in this video and you like it, please give it a thumbs up. And if you made it this far in this video, but you didn't like this, this video, please give it a double thumbs down and still subscribe to the channel either way. Thank you for watching. I'll talk to you in the next video. Bye.